What's up nutrition nerds and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're looking at the two forms of carbohydrates which are commonly found in sports supplements which are available on the market. Now there's loads of brands with carb supplements which are available to buy and that might be as a bar, a gel, a chewy, a drink and they all market them slightly different and claim that theirs is better. So today we're going to strip away all of that marketing hype and give you the real information. I'll give you the knowledge to look at those supplements and make the decision as to what's best for you. As we've discussed in previous videos, there are different forms of carbohydrates, but as triathletes, the main ones we care about are glucose, fructose, and glycogen. As a very brief overview, Glucose and fructose are basic forms of carbohydrates, and our body uses them in different ways to create energy. Glycogen is what we call glucose molecules that are all linked together in a big chain, and this is our body's store of carbohydrates. And we use this store just for our day-to-day -day activities and also when we exercise. If you want to know a bit more about all of this, then you can just watch the video I made on carbohydrates, which I've linked to the top of the screen now. In terms of supplements, the focus will be on glucose and fructose. And what we want to answer today is whether we should use these two forms separately or together. And are there any strategies that we can use to take advantage of them and to race to your full potential? And we'll answer those along with a tip if you're someone who suffers with tummy upset during a race. But firstly, why are we talking about glucose and fructose today? Well, that's to do with whether carbohydrates help with performance in exercise. Now the answer to this is quite definitely yes. Carbohydrates help with performance in exercise, especially if there's an element of intensity to it. While there is still a lot of research going on, the overwhelming evidence suggests that carbohydrates are still king when it comes to performance in exercise. So that includes racing and covers anywhere from a sprint distance to an Ironman. As an aside, by the way, I'd really like to know whether you'd like me to go into the research in these videos or whether you'd prefer that I just let you know what the latest evidence suggests. But that, of course, would require you to trust what I'm saying. Ooh, dodgy. But I'd want to do what's most helpful for you. If you'd like to just listen generally rather than me go into too much depth, then that's fine. If you're interested, I could always just link some of the studies that support or refute whatever it is that I'm talking about. Let me know in the comments what you'd prefer and I'll make sure to do it for future videos. So anyway, until evidence suggests otherwise, or unless you have a medical reason not to, I would strongly suggest that you use carbohydrates for your racing. So that leads us nicely on to what form of carbohydrates to use for racing. And this is where glucose and fructose really come in. Now the idea behind using a carbohydrate supplement during a race is to save our body's glycogen stores and use an outside source for energy instead. So we aim to use the carbohydrates that we take in during a race and use that instead of our body's glycogen reserves to fuel our muscles. Essentially, what we're doing here is making sure that we don't run out of, or at least prolonging the time before we run out of, a carbohydrate source during a race. There are loads of other factors that affect performance in a race, but here we're specifically talking about carbohydrate availability. We're maximizing our performance chances by ensuring an adequate supply of carbs. Because if we run out of carbohydrates when we're trying to race fast, we bonk. Traditionally, glucose has always been the carbohydrate of choice. It's directly and easily absorbed into the bloodstream and we can use it straight away to start generating energy. So if you look at whatever supplement you choose to use in a race, it will usually say something like glucose, dextrose, glucose or dextrose syrup or maltodextrin. Now these are all essentially the same thing, they're all just slightly different forms or preparations. However, what you might notice as well is that some contain fructose, fructose syrup or sucrose. Sucrose, as I mentioned in the carbohydrate video, is a glucose molecule paired to a fructose molecule, so it covers both. So what's the deal here? Why the combination? This is to do with how much carbohydrate we can actually absorb in our gut during exercise. We know from research that we can absorb roughly 60 grams of glucose per hour. When I say these figures, by the way, take it with a pinch of salt. Some people can absorb more, some people can absorb less. It's all just very individual. This is where you have to practice and find out how much you can absorb before you get tummy upset. And remember the golden rule, never try anything new on race day. Practice it in advance. 
We know from the research that the more carbohydrate we try to take in and absorb, the more likely we are to get stomach upset. Because if we can't digest and absorb it, we've just got unabsorbed material bouncing around in our gut. And no one likes that, especially if you're trying to shoot for a PB. So those clever people in the lab thought, how can we improve on our carbohydrate intake in a race? Is there anything else we can use alongside glucose? And the answer is yes, and that's fructose. When we absorb anything in our gut, we have to have a mechanism to be able to do it. So imagine it like a little gate or a bridge. They can only transport so much in one go or in a certain time frame. And for glucose, that figure is 60 grams an hour when we exercise. Now it turns out that fructose uses a different transporter, so you can actually absorb both of them at the same time. You can't absorb quite as much fructose as glucose, and the current estimation is about 30 grams an hour. But by combining them, you can increase the overall carbohydrate intake to 90 grams an hour, 60 grams of glucose and 30 grams of fructose. By increasing the overall amount of carbohydrates available, you reduce the body's need to use its own store of glycogen, which is why it helps to prolong intense exercise. Interestingly as well though, the research seems to suggest that by combining glucose and fructose, you reduce the likelihood of stomach upset. So this is a great tip if you're someone who suffers with stomach upset during a race. If you don't already, try a glucose-fructose combination and see if that helps you out. It might be worth having a look at how much carbohydrate you're actually taking in during a race as well. And if you're towards those higher ends of the figures that I mentioned, then maybe bring it back a bit. You're more likely to race better overall if you don't have any tummy upset versus trying to cram in a few more carbohydrates and then stopping to do what you gotta do. Now, as I mentioned, these amounts are rough estimations, but if you look at your supplements, you'll probably find some sort of combination to this effect. Right, now it's time for a bit of audience interaction. I want you to go and grab your supplements and we'll do a quick nerdy nutritional dive into their ingredients. Have you got them? Gels, which are about 20 grams of glucose, will say consume three an hour. Drinks or sachets will generally say consume one an hour. And if they're a glucose only preparation, it will say 60 grams of carbohydrates, but if it's a glucose fructose combination, it will be somewhere between 80 and 90 grams an hour. And hopefully, unless I've got this completely wrong, your supplement should show a similar ingredient list and suggested intake. Now you can use this to your advantage and consider what it is that you're actually consuming. You now know that as a ballpark figure, you can have about 60 grams of glucose an hour and 30 grams of fructose. So do you do this or are you massively underdosing or overdosing yourself? A friend of mine did this and realized they were having way, way less than the recommended amount. So we've made some changes to their nutrition plan to use for future races. You'd be surprised just how much time improvement you can get by having a proper nutrition strategy in a race. The last thing to say is that we give so much time to training our body physically, but it's important to remember that we can also train our gut. We'll cover it properly in another video, but the key here is practice. If you can't tolerate much in the way of nutrition when you exercise, don't give up. I'd suggest if you do have issues, bring it back and reduce how much you actually take in to start with. And then over time, practice with just taking a little bit more. And the likelihood is that your gut will improve with how much it can actually take in. And if you're still having trouble, try a different preparation like a chewy, a bar or a drink and see what works best for you. So just to recap, the overall message is that as a ballpark figure, you can have up to 90 grams of carbohydrates an hour, and that's split into a max of 60 grams of glucose and 30 grams of fructose. It's individual, so you need to work out what's right for you and you need to practice, but it's a great figure to aim for. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments if you've had any sudden realizations about the amount of carbohydrates you do or perhaps don't take in during a race. And let me know what you'd like me to do on the evidence side of things. And if you did find it useful, give the video a like and press that subscribe button for me and I'll catch you next time. See ya. Now it turns out that fructose uses a different transporter. So you can actually absorb both glucose. Uh, glucose.